One of the biggest concerns people have when they're choosing a camper van is about storage, whether it will hold all their stuff. Of course, everyone is different, and I can't make that determination for you, but I'm happy to share with you the kinds of things that we take, and especially on this long trip to Alaska, uh, clothing is a big item. We'll be covering a, a wide range of temperatures, everything probably from the hundreds in the desert to the low 40s, maybe even high 30s um, along the way. So today I'm going to share with you our clothing and uh, where we store it and how we store it and then you can kind of decide whether it's the kind of space that would suit your needs or whether you think you need something bigger. So here goes. <music> basically two bins on here that we allocate for our clothing. Of course, I get the bigger side. <laughs> now in the past, I've always shared this space with food, but now that we have the shelf above the cab, I don't need to do that. I can take up all the space, and especially on this trip, I think I'm going to need it. So I'm gonna pull out all my things and then show you the kind of clothing that I'm taking. I can tell you that this vehicle is not big enough for a tripod. Um, but here's the, um, so let's go through this first bin. And this is my mosquito jacket and pants, a pair of sandals, and my underwear. And that goes in there. Um, for, for pants and things, I have, oh, look what I found. Something's in here. What did I leave in here? Oh, room key from Hawaii. Okay, so uh, I have a skort, a pair of shorts, uh, two capri length uh, pants. I like the, sh the kind of the go over your knee kind of things because I can get on my knees without scratching them up. And a pair of jeans and a hiking pant. And on the jeans, because I like pockets, I have sewn an extra pocket on the side for my cell phone. So if you're inclined to do that sort of thing, I highly recommend it. I'm tired of these manufacturers making clothes that don't have adequate pockets. So they're the bottoms I'm taking. This is my swim gear, which probably won't get a whole lot of use, but you never know. In Tahoe, we like to go down to the lake if it's warm enough. I have uh, shoes for walking in water across, you know, streams or whatever. And then I have um, my swim, swim gear. I have uh, two rash guards. One's a long sleeve and one's short sleeve that I can also use as a top. Um, and I have, you know, my swim, swim pants. I use, I like boy shorts. So um, I use boy shorts instead of, you know, more traditional swimwear because I could wear those as shorts as well. Let's see, in this bag, I have my rain gear and a windbreaker. This is the windbreaker, folds into this nice little carrying case and you can actually strap it around your waist if you wanted. And uh, an umbrella. On our trip last fall, we could have used an umbrella a number of times, and so we've decided we'll take one. And uh, my rain pants and my rain jacket. So things are kind of sorted a little bit kind of by the weather. Let's see, this is my warm weather, or my, you know, cold weather jackets. So I have a nano, one of those Patagonia nano vests. I forgot what they call them. They have nano vest, and then I've also got the jacket with the hood on it. And those are quite warm, actually. And they stuff pretty easily into here. And then in this bag, I have my socks and sleepwear. And as I mentioned in an earlier video, I use the, I'm using the um, men's, um, these are the men's athletic pants from Target. They're really comfy, super soft. I can wear those if we go to a Planet Fitness to work out. I can use those. And um, so they double as sleepwear. And then my uh, a tank top and 
four pair of short socks and two crew length. You probably can't see that. And then last but not least are my tops. And this I probably have more of than anything else, uh, partly because you get so tired of wearing the same thing all the time. And, um, and you know, you need, you might be going out, you know, there are other events and you might, well, might want to look a little bit better than just in a t-shirt. So I have one thin a top that I like to hike in because it keeps the sun off of my arms. I have a reversible sweater. This, this thing reverses so I can get one side dirty <laughs> and then turn it inside out. I have four long sleeve shirts, very thin, and then three t-shirts that are quite thin. And I think that will be more than adequate because I'm bound to buy something on the road. Now, shoe-wise, so I've shown you my sandals, and then I will also um, have a pair of hiking shoes that I wear every day, basically. Um, and those are another pair of Merrill shoes, which work really well. They're waterproof, and, um, and I'll probably get another pair because they, they've worked out that well. And in the back, in the uh, garage area, both John and I have a pair of uh, rain boots that are about ankle high, and uh, we figure that we'll need those in Alaska. So they're down there. And now let me show you John's clothes. And then John has the other side, which is quite a bit smaller, but he also takes less than I take. Let me pull it down. John's winter kind of clothing is in here. So he has a um, orange jacket that's very much like my blue one, the, and a rain coat and rain pants in here. His uh, socks and underwear are in this bag. And he goes super light on the pants. He just has a pair of like swim trunk, that, you know, can use it for swim trunks or working out, as well as a pair of shorts and a pair of pants. And then of course the clothes that he will be wearing on um, the day that we leave, which will also be a pair of pants. If he chooses to take more, it's, it's all on him. He also has a vest that he really likes. It's a kind of a fleece vest. So that's in this bag. And these are his shirts. And as I've said in previous videos, we go for the really thin materials. So he's got uh, four t-shirts, and obviously you can layer all of these things. So four short sleeve t-shirts, um, and he's got uh, one, two, three, four long sleeve shirts. He's also got a pair of hiking shoes and a pair of Crocs that he uses like for the showering and that sort of thing because they can get wet. And that is all the shoes that he's taking. He also has, of course, his toiletries. Most of those, or much of those can go into the bathroom as well as mine will also go in there. And, uh, and that's it for the clothing. Now behind me is the cupboard where we used to keep all the bedding. And now the only thing that's back here is the duvet cover. Um, the down comforter with the duvet cover and uh, there will also be a larger pillow here for John so because of his surgery he he still needs a large pillow that he can kind of wedge between his legs so he gets three pillows on this trip and so that will also go back in here uh, so the only thing left to pack now are my uh, are our electronics as well as my camera gear and that takes up a lot of space because, you know, when you've got gimbals and tripods and, and all of that kind of stuff, it can kind of get everywhere. But, uh, but you can see there's lots of space here. Uh, the Instant Pot is now stored up here as well. Um, but there's still space here to put things. And there's still a little bit of space uh, over the, in the shelf over the cab. And I will turn the camera around and show you that one.
So there's just a little bit of space right here where we can stick something. And then our, we have the four little pillows, the cover, the warm window cover for the sliding door, and that, oh, and our, pill, our uh, towels. So our towels are right here, as well as the uh, screen that goes between the cab and the back of the van. I almost forgot hats. John loves his baseball caps. So I purchased some magnets that I've now hung on this rack right here. And I figure that's probably gonna be strong enough to hold his baseball caps there. And, uh, and also my hats. I'm gonna be taking two hats and hopefully they'll store right there because hats do tend to get in the way. So one more look at my side. You can see I still have this space here. Um, where I can put things and it's nice to have a little space that's you know open because we will have clothes that we're wearing the first day uh, maybe a lightweight jacket things you need a place to stuff those and then on John's side he still has some room over here and as I said there is still room in this back cabinet the other thing that tends to take up space is food I'm going to try to do a good job of not taking too much food but um, the back that back cabinet will also be our kind of our spillover area for any food that doesn't fit in the food cabinet. I've said this before about uh, stuff that we take with us, but the more we travel, the more we realize that we don't need as much as we thought we needed. And actually, when you start getting things out of the van, the happier you are because there's not any, there's, there's a lot less friction between people sharing such a small space. I hope this has helped you, and if you have any questions, uh, please ask them. I will do my best to answer them timely, but when we're on the road and we don't have cell service, then of course it's more difficult. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Hi, Chris. Oh.